What's up everyone, Adam here from Cape Crawlers and this is the Bronco Build Part 4. Welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome back to the Bronco Build. So here we are in episode 4 of the Bronco Build. Let's do a quick recap of the last episode because I think the upgrades that we did in the last one were some of the most impactful that we did. So in episode 3 we did the Endura high clearance linkages. We did a 4 link conversion in the front. And the way we set the linkage up, I think, made a big difference because we did one O-ring on each linkage point, which allowed for just really smooth articulation, smooth movement throughout all the linkage. It's nice and fluid, super easy to move. And that resulted in a tremendous amount of added articulation. Um, traction was improved. All in all, those were just some really impactful mods that we did. We also did the brass steering knuckles in the front to add a little more weight up front to uh, help with climbing and help with uh, overall stability, keep that center of gravity down low. So that brings us to phase four here. So let's take a look at what we've got for this episode. Okay, let's take a look at what we got this week. So I don't have a whole lot of upgrades this week because I'm kind of in between orders right now. I've got some things coming. I'm still kind of thinking about what I want to do for the next phase, but what I've done is a couple things here. So we're gonna do basically some aesthetic upgrades, a little bit of performance, but primarily we're gonna do some customization. So we've got this rubber, peelable rubber coating right here. And what I've done is I've taken a spare set of RC four wheel drive stamp steel beadlock wheels and I've coated the inside red. I've tried to make a custom wheel here is what I'm going to do this week. So this took me too many tries. It was a huge pain in the butt to get done, but fairly happy with how they are. I'm anxious to get them together. I put get tires on them and see how they look. I am also going to do one of the spare tires. Yeah, so I've got the stock tires that come with it. I'm going to try to paint or coat the inside of the wheel red as well. If you remember from the last episode, I talked about matching the spare tire to the red wheels and trying to keep that theme, uh, that scale realism. So we're gonna try to do that. I also got some Endura rock sliders. Also, if you remember from previous episodes, the body's just getting banged up on the side here. Uh, it's taken, uh, quite a thrashing along the panels here. So we got these steel rock sliders that we're gonna put on. So I have a similar set of these for the Gladiator and I think these will look really good on the Bronco. You know, these just have a really nice fit and finish to them. You know, a nice scale look. These are gonna be fun. And these will also protect that nice red paint a little more than the kind of fake sliders are doing right now. All right, so just because of the nature of these upgrades, they aren't a huge performance gain. I'm not gonna do a before and after course run. I will do an after course run just so that we can get some sweet run footage to see how the wheels and tires look and uh, the back tire and the whole package all together. So I'll do a course run at the very end here, but let's break for a moment. I'm gonna put these wheels together I'm gonna put the rock sliders on and see if I can color up this rear spare tire. And then we'll come back and see how it looks. Okay, here we are, Bronco, phase four. Let's talk about what we did. So we installed the RC four wheel drive stamp steel beadlock wheels. These were originally just black, but I used the, what is this, uh, Rust-Oleum, basically Plasti Dip. It's the rubberized coating. I used that to get this red insert here. This was a pain in the butt. Let me tell you, I did this so many times. I don't even want to tell you how many times I had to do this. It came out pretty good. You know, I think, as I said earlier, I, I wish it had come out a little cleaner. There's some spots in there that I'm a little unhappy with, but I'm going to run it for a little while and see how it looks. Maybe it'll grow on me. Also skeptical of the red. It's not as glossy as I was hoping it would be. So it doesn't quite match the uh, metallic red of the body, quite as good as the Endura beadlocks did. 
But I don't know. I almost kind of I switched the Enduras out because I kind of felt like they were fading. So I don't know if you can see this, but I felt like it was starting to lose a bit of its red on the outside. If we look at the outside of this wheel compared to the inside, it just felt like these were turning not so much pinkish, but they were losing kind of the bright red finish that you know, I bought them for. So that's what kind of led me to looking at different wheels. Plus, I love the RC four-wheel drive wheels because you run them with the hubs reversed. You know, these are four-piece wheels. So you run the hubs flipped and it gives you a few millimeters of extra width. So you look at the track on this thing now, it is super wide. And I bet if we look at the flex on this thing, let's try it out. Let's do five. Easy five. I bet we can do six. We can get six. Let's try it out. Oh, it's got it. It's got six tires out of this thing. So we definitely gained some more articulation with the wider track. And that uh, you know, that's always important to me. I'm always chasing that flex. You know that. So we did get some good articulation out of there. So why don't we take a little closer look at the upgrades here. All right, so here we are. Here's a better look at the wheels. And here's a better look at the stance. Wicked wide. You know, significantly wider. That's why you get that extra articulation because the axles are much wider now. The steps. Pretty happy with the steps. I wish they were a little more inconspicuous. They're kind of bulky looking. You know, the ones I have for the Gladiator are nice and clean. These are not as clean as I would like, but they definitely look like they're going to save our body significantly. They um, went on pretty good. One tip for these, if you're going to install these on your rig, make sure that you do the bolt, the bolt heads on the bottom so that you can slide easier. The, the nuts are pretty big and the bolts are pretty long. So if you can imagine, if this was on the bottom, it hangs you up on obstacles pretty easily. And I was running into that in a big way with the Gladiator. So that's how I learned that. You know, flip those around so you get a smoother surface here. But all in all, pretty happy. They were a, they were a bit of a pain to put together. Um, you know, fit and finish is pretty good. They're steel, they're heavy duty. So I think they'll hold up well. And all in all, I think they'll do exactly what I needed them to do, which is protect the body, give it a little bit more of that scale look. So I'm happy with them. And I think for about 16 bucks, it's hard to go wrong. It's hard to complain about that. One of the things we also did, we plasti dipped or vinyl wrapped this rear tire. So, you know, I was talking about that scale look. I wanted to have somewhat of a matching spare on here. So we did the coating on the rear tire here. Again, it's a, you know, one of those 100-yard makeover things. It's pretty clean. I need to clean it up a little more. I think if I get in there with a wire brush, I can get some of this residual red out of here. But you know, overall, I think it looks really good with the red body. So I'm happy with that. One of the other things, too, I bought new tires for this. I bought the Milestar Patagonias from RC 4-Wheel Drive as well. But I really was unhappy with how small they are. I thought just from looking at pictures and on Instagram and things that they were a bigger tire, but they were significantly smaller than these uh, mud terrains. And they were significantly smaller than the stock tires too, I felt. They were nice and wide, which is good, but they just look goofy on this thing. So I ended up putting the mud terrains back on here. And what else I did too was I vented these tires and I took the foams out. I, I feel like I can get more out of these tires if I just set them up properly. So they're a nice compound, and I feel like I'm just leaving performance on the table with these. So I took the foams out, and I vented them, and now you can see that they're super soft and squishy. You know, these are going to grab really, really well. So I guess I probably should have done a before and after course run, but we'll do an after course run to see how these things hook up. But, I mean, these are just soft and squishy. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying these out. 
you know, especially with the wider track. Yeah, you know, I think these are, this is gonna be really good for stability and for grip. So all in all, I think this will be a good set of mods here, even though it didn't turn out exactly like I was hoping. I wish the wheels looked a little bit better with the red, uh, and I wish that those Patagonias were bigger because I was really looking forward to running those. But, oh well, you know, you pivot, you know, you do the best with what you can, and you make adjustments as you go. That's part of the fun, right? You know, the trial and error. Oh, one more thing before we get into the course run. With the stamped steel bead locks, I had to drill out the inside of the wheel because the hole in the middle of these wheels does not accommodate hex extensions. So like this wheel nut for the treel hex extensions would not fit. I had to drill this out and make the hole bigger to get that in. And also, these RC four-wheel drive wheels, they do not accept the aftermarket hexes very well. It is a bear to get these things in there. Like you have to almost take a rubber mallet and pound them in. So these ones still aren't flush all the way, but they're on there solid and I got the things tight. So hopefully I don't run into issues with losing wheel nuts because man, was they, they were tough to put on. Probably these trio ones were probably the hardest that I've encountered to install on these RC four wheel drive wheels. But enough talking about these, let's get it on the course and see how this all comes together. on that thing. Flat as a pancake through there. width is a challenge through that section. Those tires work in overtime there. Oh man, the vertical grip is great. Wide tracks making it challenging. Man, this is gonna be tough. It's almost too wide. That's tight up through there. It's crazy how wide it is now. It's super stable though. Let's try our challenge line again. Bronco build phase four. What do you guys think? I'm on the fence here. I don't know. Um, 
impressed with the upgrades. You know, the wide track really makes a difference as far as stability goes, and I think it did improve, certainly improved the articulation and the ability for this thing to, you know, carry itself a lot better through the uneven terrain. It uh, reminded me of the JL, where it, the body stayed pretty f pretty steady through Articulation Alley there, I call it, and the wheels were just dropping and articulating all over the place. It's difficult to drive because it is so wide. It, it feels very wide, wider than a lot of my other rigs. I'll have to do a comparison to see why that is. I know that the treel extensions are maybe a little wider. I still don't feel like I got the wheels seated on them properly. In fact, right after that last bit of footage, the front right tire fell off because it just uh, wasn't seated on there properly and came loose. So I don't know. Uh, and I think I might have deviated a little too far from kind of the direction that I was going with the with this build from an aesthetics point of view. The rubberized coating, I think it it's okay. I need to digest this for a couple days to see how it looks. And maybe get it outside, see how it looks in the sun too. Um, I don't know. I need you guys' help here. What do you think? Did I ruin it with these upgrades here? Did I take two steps back and one step forward with the gains from articulation and the wide track versus the appearance? And when I feel like some of the uh, control, I feel like I lost because it's just so wide. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts because I'm on the fence with this round of upgrades. So I'm really interested to hear what your, uh, what your guys' impressions are. As always, thanks for watching. I'll put the links in the description for the products that we used in this build, in uh, this phase of the build. And uh, let me know what you think. Looking forward to hearing from you. Again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you've not done so already. And we'll see you in the next episode.